we will discuss what cellulite is, what causes it, and the scientific-backed treatments to reduce its appearance. We'll also cover how to prevent it. Cellulite is an extremely common skin condition, where the skin appears lumpy and dimpled due to the uneven distribution of fat deposits beneath it. It affects almost 80% of women to some degree and around 10% of men. First, let's explain how cellulite develops. We have skin, and under the skin, we have fat cells, which are called subcutaneous fat. Beneath this fat, we have muscles. Between the muscles and the skin, we have fibrous connective bands that are integrated into the fat. This connective tissue connects the skin and muscles. When fat cells increase, they push the skin upward, while connective tissue pulls the skin down. This dissonance creates areas where the skin is dimpled and lumpy. You can think of it like a mattress. The outer fabric is the skin, the springs inside the mattress are the connective tissue, and the padding is the fat cells. If you disproportionately add padding to the mattress, it will become lumpy and uneven. Now, let's discuss why this fat cell growth happens and why cellulite develops. The first and strongest factor is genetics. Genetic factors play a huge role in the development of cellulite. The second important predictor is hormones. In women, estrogen stimulates fat growth under the skin, especially in the thighs, buttocks, and hips. On the other hand, estrogen affects connective tissue development. In women, this connective tissue is arranged in a parallel pattern, which allows fat cells to push through more easily, creating the dimpled effect. In men, the connective tissue has a crisscross pattern, providing more support and less room for fat cells to bulge out. Obesity and being overweight cause fat cell growth and make cellulite more prominent. Another important risk factor for cellulite is poor diet, lack of exercise, smoking, and alcohol consumption. These factors decrease blood circulation, weaken connective tissue, and make it easier for cellulite to develop. Age is also important. As skin ages, it loses elasticity and becomes thinner. Reduced collagen production and skin elasticity with age can make cellulite more noticeable. Cellulite is not directly correlated with any specific disease but is commonly associated with a sedentary lifestyle and obesity. It is also more common in cases of polycystic ovary syndrome and hypothyroidism. Additionally, blood circulation problems, low-grade inflammation in the body, and oxidative stress can worsen cellulite by weakening and damaging collagen, which is a structural component of the skin. The first and one of the most effective treatments is laser and radiofrequency treatment. This method uses thermal energy directly on fat cells to break them down and shrink them, showing significant improvement over several sessions. This procedure also stimulates collagen synthesis. Optimal results are usually seen within two to three months of starting the treatment, with several sessions required. Periodic maintenance visits may be necessary for long-lasting effects, but substantial effects typically require six to ten sessions. This procedure has no significant long-term side effects, although temporary redness or irritation of the skin is possible. Acoustic wave therapy is another common method. It is also effective but not as effective as laser or radiofrequency treatment. The third method is massage and mechanical treatments. Endermal and manual massage can improve circulation and may have a moderate effect, but usually, the improvement is temporary. Weight loss is crucial as it makes cellulite less visible. Diet and exercise are important factors. In the diet, reducing sugars and increasing fruits and vegetables are important. High-fiber foods help improve digestion and remove toxins from the body, which is also an important factor for cellulite. Strength exercises significantly improve skin appearance. For example, focusing on lower body exercises like squats, lunges, and leg presses, performed two to three times per week, is effective. Aerobic exercises like walking and jogging are also effective, especially for weight loss and fat burning, which further improve the appearance of cellulite. Lastly, cellulite is not cellulitis. What we are talking about is not considered a disease but a variation of normal skin appearance. On the other hand, cellulitis is the inflammation of the cells in the skin, 
usually caused by bacteria, and causes pain and redness of the skin. Despite some similarities in their names, they are different conditions.